So you're wondering whether you should ride skinny tires or wide tires. So here are skinny tires versus wide tires for fixed gear riding. What's up? I'm Zach Lardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter. Be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and consider hitting the like button and subscribing so YouTube knows to recommend you more fixed gear and cycling videos just like this one. I started riding my fixed gear on skinny 25C tires. Then when I built my Nature Boy, I bumped it up to 38Cs and currently I'm on on 28 C's so my experience runs the full gamut of skinny medium and wide tires here are the pros and cons of skinny versus wide tires for fixed gear riding along with some of my recommendations for each tire size that you can find linked in the description feel free to check those out at any point during this video Speaking of wide tires and potential track lacrosse builds, our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles sent me their thunder for me to build up and ride to see how it stacks up as the ultimate fixed gear commuter bike. The thunder has a lot of features that just make a lot of sense if you're building up a fixed gear commuter or even a track lacrosse bike, like geometry that's more aggressive, in my opinion, more fun, built out of Reynolds 725 tubing to keep the ride quality light and lively. And of course, monster tire clearance that can easily fit up to 45C tires. If you're considering riding wider tires for one of the many benefits that we'll soon discuss, consider checking out my Wabi Thunder build by clicking the card above or by sticking around till the end of the video to click the link at the end. First, the pros and cons of skinny tires. We're talking tires 25 millimeters wide or less. Of course, because they're skinnier, they're going to be able to fit on more bikes, which is particularly a problem on track bikes and fixed gear bikes. A lot of track and fixed gear frame sets have clearance for 25C tires, maybe 28C tires. As of now, skinnier tires are just compatible with a lot more frame sets compared to wider tires. Some people just like the feel of skinnier tires. Because they run at higher pressures, they give you a good amount of road feel, feeling of connectedness between you, the bike, and the road. Overall, the bike will handle a bit more sensitively. On skinnier tires, it's easier to take sharp turns. It feels more natural to weave through traffic and to make these sharp adjustments while riding. And because they're less material, skinnier tires are going to be lighter than wide tires, meaning they'll accelerate slightly faster and they're easier to skid and to stop with. If you're someone that particularly cares about weight, skinnier tires can save you a hefty amount of grams. For instance, a 23C Gator Skin versus a 28C Gator Skin is 140 grams lighter per tire. The biggest downside for me though with skinny tires is that they're more prone to flats. Because you have to run them at higher pressures, that means objects like glass or nails or staples can get lodged into them more easily. Another big drawback is they're less comfortable than wider tires because of those high pressures. Not only can you feel the smooth road beneath you, which is an excellent feeling, but you can also feel a lot of cracks, bumps, potholes, and the ride quality can become very jarring at times, especially if the area that you live in doesn't exactly have the best roads. When I was riding skinny tires, I was still living back home in Sacramento, California, and some of the best riding that you can get there are out away from the city center and away from the suburbs and around the farmlands. There, the roads feel like they go on forever, and there's a lot less traffic, which makes riding there a lot more fun. Problem is that the roads out there are pretty rough, and when I was riding on 23 Cs, I actually found that the roads were too rough and too chattery to ride with skinny tires on. And while out there was some of the best riding that Sacramento has to offer, I just couldn't bring myself to do it because of the skinny 23C tires made it too uncomfortable and too fatiguing to ride on. You're also confined to just riding on pavement, which is not the case with wide tires. We're talking 35 to 45C. Because wide tires have a much bigger air volume, that means you can run them at lower pressures, making them a lot more comfortable than skinny tires. That lower pressure allows the tires to deflect more and absorb more of the bumps and road buzz, meaning you can ride in a lot more places. Smooth roads, roads that haven't been maintained since the Roosevelt administration, cobblestones, gravel, dirt, mud, potholes, curbs, staircases. The thing that I really noticed when switching to wider tires is just that I could go about 
anywhere that I wanted to on my bike, which opens up a whole new world of cycling and makes it a lot of fun. And with all that comfort, I also find it a lot more enjoyable to ride long distances, 80 to 100 plus miles on wider tires. The lack of road buzz compared to skinny tires just makes wider tires a lot easier to pedal for hours on end. Wide tires are also safer than skinny tires. They tend to have a bit more traction, allowing you to ride more confidently under slippery conditions, and they're more resistant to road hazards like potholes or railroad tracks. My worst crash that I had happened when my 25C tire got caught between a set of railroad tracks, and then I couldn't steer, and then went over the handlebars. That just doesn't happen with 38C tires. They don't fit between the railroad tracks. Wide tires are also more resistant to flats because of those lower pressures and because they can deflect more than skinny tires. The low pressure makes it harder for broken glass or nails or thorns to actually punch through the rubber of the tire and puncture the tube. Instead, what happens a lot of times, the bike will just roll straight over the sharp object without getting punctured. I don't recommend doing this, but when I was riding 38 Cs on my All City Nature Boy, I would frequently just barrel through beds of glass and my bike would be totally fine. Speaking of barreling through, because wider tires have more mass, they have more momentum, and riding on them feels like riding a two-wheeled truck where it feels like you can just barrel straight on through anything. And once the wheels are spun up, it feels like they'll just keep on going. But for the cons, all of that momentum means that they can feel a bit harder to spin up from stops or to ride uphill compared to skinnier tires. And because the bike can feel like it just wants to keep on rolling, it can be harder to stop the bike when backpedaling and skidding. Wide tires, because of their bigger mass, can also feel a bit more sluggish to steer. The handling does feel a bit more truck-like, where I have to use more effort to steer the bike, both in the front end and by leaning, and sometimes I wouldn't be able to make corners as safely as I would like to. And depending on what you like from your bike, all of that cushion from the low tire pressures can make the bike feel dead, and it can feel a bit more disconnected with the road. Riding wider tires will limit your options when it comes to frame sets, also limiting your brake options. The frame sets that you have available may not have the geometry that you like, which was my case. They may not be as clean and bare bones as you like, which is what a lot of fixed gear riders enjoy, or they might not be made out of the material that you want. As of now, frame sets for wide tires for fixed gears is a bit limited. And if you ride on a smaller frame set, say 54 and below, you might run into more toe overlap issues because not only is the tire wider, it's also taller. So skinny tires, wide tires, or something in between, which one is best for you? Well, if you're the type of rider that likes the ultimate feeling of connectedness with your bike, and you absolutely do not want to sacrifice quick steering and nimble handling, then skinny tires are for you. But if you're somebody that likes to have versatility from your bike, have a bike that can do everything pretty well, while still being just as fast as skinny tires under real world conditions, while allowing you to go just about anywhere you could want to go on your bike, all while getting less flats and being more comfortable, then wide tires are a good choice for you. But maybe you're somebody like me. I want quick enough handling, good enough road feel, and really good flat resistance. So if you're somebody that likes the best of both worlds, somebody that likes to live reasonably dangerously, then medium width tires, 28 to 32s, are an excellent choice, and there's a good chance that your bike will be able to fit them. For skinny tires, I recommend the Continental Grand Prix 4000s. These are a nimble yet grippy enough race tire, and they're one of the most popular skinny tires, if not the most popular. These can make your bike feel a bit quicker and are an excellent choice if you do strictly pavement riding only. Skaters beware, if you skid a lot, you will wear out these tires really quickly 
and they're not cheap at around $40 a pop. For medium width, I've had really good experience with Continental Gator Skin. They feel fast rolling and they feel well planted on the pavement and they're incredibly flat resistant and durable while still giving a reasonably plush and comfortable ride quality. The thing I'm most impressed with though with Gator Skins is their durability. After a year and a half of riding on these Gator Skins, I've only gotten one flat. And to test their longevity, I've been skidding a lot in my Gator Skins and they still look like they could last at least another two years. An annoyance that I've had though is the sidewalls. After about six months of having them, the sidewalls started having these loose threads, which I need to cut periodically. Although the rubber is very durable, I do question how long the sidewalls can last. And if you want monster wide tires for your fixed gear, Panaracer Pacellas and Panaracer Gravel King Slicks are great options. Plush and cushiony, a nice balance of grippiness and nimbleness, an excellent option if you mostly ride on the street but sometimes want to take that gravel or dirt trail to get away from the traffic. So if you're considering doing a track lacrosse build, consider checking out this video where I build up the Wombi Thunder. And Fixie Famous shout out to Stan Strong 108 and Ryan Witt for helping to make these fixed gear and cycling videos possible through the support on Patreon.